Monta. We have a D19. Two take one. Stanley, can you tell us in 25 seconds the synopsis of your new picture? Uh, in 25 seconds? Yeah, uh, yes, it's a picture, it's a, it's a, um, a drama about um, human emotion in the United States. It, uh, it deals with the, the tragedy of divorce as it relates to uh, the children and those who have to suffer continually from the effects of an unhappy home. Sounds like a very serious picture. Yes, it is. There's no comedy in it whatsoever? Uh, no, I try and keep as much comedy out of my films as possible. Why is that? Because I don't like the idea of people laughing. It makes what? me nervous. It upsets you that yes. people should laugh? Yes. Yeah. I like to cut down on the amount of happiness. Why is that? Because I, I'm not crazy about happiness. I think it's a mistake. On whose part? Uh, on people who have to put up with it. You know what I mean? Do you mean you're the audiences that see the film or the people that appear in it? Well, no one, no one uh, comes to see the film. You know what I mean? So I don't have that problem. Also, there's nobody in the movie. No one at all? No one at all, no. But why is that? Why? Because it's much cheaper if you don't use people. How long did it take you to shoot the picture, then? Uh, we filmed for uh, a half an hour in Puerto Rico, and uh, we, we had to go back and film for seven minutes in New York. Is it a high-budget picture, then? Uh, the picture cost, in American money, cost about $160 to make. Who do you admire? Uh, other comedians? Um, I don't really like other comedians because I'm jealous. Uh, do they make you laugh, other comedians, or not? No. I don't, I don't, uh, I don't laugh at anybody. Um, do you, how long does, does it usually run? Well, it's run for six months in the United States, but that's been a mistake. Is that at one theater? Uh, no, it's, it's run six months totally in, uh, 2,000 different theaters. That's mad. Do you watch your own films? No. Why is that? Because, um, I don't have the patience to sit through them. Um, do you watch them while you're editing them, or...? No. 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 I generally edit blindfolded. How do you actually go about writing a, um, a story? Uh, that's a good point. And does the, the finished product ever, uh, work out the way you imagined it to? Never. No. Why is that? Because the finished product doesn't seem to work out at all. Well, how do you know that if you don't see it? Because I hear the comments from people, and they're usually very negative. Now, d does criticism upset you? Uh, only negative criticism, yes. Uh, if you get a good notice, are you pleased or displeased? Displeased. Why is that? Because uh, I, I don't like to hear anything that, you know, at all about my work. Have you any ambitions uh, in, in films? Uh, no, I would like to be, I think I would like to uh, be found dead face down in the street. Is there any character, fictitious or living, that you'd like to play? Um, no. No. Well, can you, tell so. me, can you tell me how you got into movies in the first instance? Yes, it was my camera, and uh, there was very little they could do about it. Um, what sort of camera was it? Is it an expensive one? Or? Yes, I, I had the equipment, and there was no way of making the film without me. And which was the first picture you made, then? First picture I made was a film called Potemkin. Was that recent? No, I made that in the, uh, actually I made that in the 20s. Was, it, was the dialogue very hard to write for that picture? No, that was a, that was a silent film. Yeah, but was, who wrote the music for it? Uh, Marvin Hamlish. Yes, is he still writing? Uh, he was as of this morning. And this afternoon? This afternoon, no, he's retired. Oh, yes. Why, why is he retired? Because he has a stud farm now and uh, breeds racehorses. Um, you've worked with some very interesting people, I think. Uh, did you find them interesting, say, say, in What's New Pussycat, your co-stars? No. They're bores? Bores. Mm. Who, d who was the most boring of that cast, do you think? Uh, did, you, did you include as boring the, the, the lovely ladies that were in that picture? 
Uh, yes. Oh, what did you find boring about them? Uh, everything. They were just boring to look at and boring to listen to. It was a boring picture, as I recall. Well, I rather enjoyed it. Yes, but you're mistaken. But I, I also I like the credit titles very much. The credit titles? Yes. What were they now? Well, they were sort of squiggly lines that kept going. Yeah, oh through. yes, I like that. Yeah. Well, I like anything squiggly. And there was a a, a singer who <laughs> recorded the title song. I can't remember his name. Nor I, because I never saw the picture. Ah. Did you have anything, anything whatsoever to do with the production? Pardon me? Did you have anything whatsoever to do with the production of that film? No, I disavowed myself of any responsibility of the picture. Mm. And does that apply to all your films? Yes. Now, what is it then that makes you cut yourself off from something that you've produced and devised and acted in? Uh, a sense of survival. And why do you go on doing it? Um, that's a good point, because I have a contract to do three more films, and when that's over, I'm going to retire from movies, I think. And will you have made a lot of money? I will have made, uh, no, I'll be in debt by that time. Um, now, was Casino Royale uh, as farcical in the production as uh, we all hear about? Well, they all speak very well of you, actually. Um, whatever happened to uh, What's Up Tiger Lily? Because we didn't see it in this country. No, that's a picture that I made uh, in the United States that was released only in Iceland. And did they go for it? Uh, they liked it. It was a big hit in Iceland. Why um, was that? Why? Because it had a message that was relevant to people that live in that kind of climate. Can you remember anything about it? Not really, other than the whole thing was like a nightmare. What sort of nightmare? I mean, the kind you have when you go to sleep. And did it terrify you, this nightmare? Yes, it was not a pleasant experience making the film. Is it a pleasant ex experience now that, that uh, people come up to you and say, we saw your picture? No. No. That's kind of frightening. I'm kind of Four, take one. Right, John. Oh. Um, yes, uh, it, was there a sequence that you liked very much from uh, Pussycat? Yes, I liked the, my favorite sequence was the, the, um, the scene just before the first reel, uh, that goes, uh, XXX987654310. What is it that appeals to you about that? I thought that had the most social satire in it of anything in the film. It had a message? Yes. Uh, do you feel the message was just directed at you? Or? No, 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 that was, that, the message was universal in that. What was the message? That uh, numerals can descend in order if placed properly. Well, if that was, the, uh, to your mind, the best scene, what, uh, what was the worst? Uh, the scene between the start of reel one and the part that says the end. Was that a, a particularly long scene? Uh, it was about uh, close to two hours. Yeah. Was there nothing in, in that two hour scene that uh, you found was slightly amusing? Um, yes, yeah, somewhere in the middle there was, uh, there was a shot of the sky that was rather puckish. And what was the appeal about the sky? Uh, just the shade of blue that it was at the moment. Kind of a funny shade of blue, if you know how blue can occasionally be. Really funny. What's it like to go to the uh, Academy Award ceremony? Uh, well, you've got to get all dressed up and uh, usually have to drive there. You know what I mean? Because it's not really too near where you live, no matter where you live. They work that out. Where actually did you live then, Buddy? At that time I was living in New York. The awards were in California. Um, did, were you embarrassed by, by the, uh, all the television cameras and the newspaper reporters and, um, at the ceremony? Did this sort of worry Huh? What? <laughs> can, you, can you say that again? Yes. Um, does it embarrass you that 
You ask for autographs in the street that newspaper people are always after you. Oh, oh, yes, yes. Uh, but practically everything embarrasses me. But normally when people aren't embarrassed, I mean, a film star likes signing autographs and likes meeting the press. No, that doesn't thrill me. If I'm asked for an autograph, I usually produce a large hammer that I carry with me for such occasions and bring it down swiftly on the head of the person who asks. Well, what is there in the film that is so offensive in your mind to uh, someone that's paid to come and see it? Um, what appears on the screen for the duration of the film is offensive uh, to most people. Uh, is, there, is there a section of the public that you think it wouldn't be offensive to? Uh, yes, nobody. <laughs> no one at all? No one at all. That's the section I think will not be offended by it. Yeah. Um, in the... Uh, go back to Casino Royale. Um, did you have money in that picture yourself? Yes, I had four dollars invested in that. And uh, so far it's down to about a dollar and a half. Well, what was the reason for its uh, uh, flop at the box office? The fact that uh, people who came in to see it would run screaming up the aisles after ten minutes uh, and generally tell their friends not to see it. It was that kind of film. Yeah, well, what made them scream and run up the aisles? Uh, what we were presenting on the screen. Yes, but what, what was it about the picture, that uh, what you were presenting on the screen, that offended people so much? It wasn't offensive. It was uh, what you would call a, a tremendous lack of any redeeming quality whatsoever, uh, which was not easy to achieve because they spent uh, $20 million to get that lack of quality. <laughs> oh, well, I've got to stop a bit. Can I have a cigarette? <laughs> Five, take one. In Take the Money and Run, if you mind repeating the title, um, how do you go about, I mean, this applies to any picture, so how do you, you write the sequences yourself. Um, how do you, where do the ideas come from? I plagiarise them from other, more talented people. Yeah, but isn't this uh, not the right thing to do, because it might not you be sued? Uh, yes, if you're caught, it goes badly. But, I mean, you, do you plagiarise good ideas or bad ideas? The best I can find. But, I mean, you've been saying that uh, you don't really want to entertain. Um, yes. Right? So, when you say best, do you mean best or worst? I mean best, and I also mean worst. What I do is plagiarise the best ideas from um, textbooks. You know, so, for instance, say I have a book on algebra. What I do is take the best equations film them, and hope that it comes out. Um, does that music play an important part, do you think, in, in... Does it help the comedy in those particular sequences? No, I try and add music that will hamper the comedy, if I possibly can, slow down the pace. Where do you get that idea from? Uh, from watching the great comedians. This is not what they used to do. And uh, in an effort to be original, I've tried to make a picture that isn't funny, comedy that doesn't work, uh, so I could be unique. Is this the first time you've done that? No, I have a series of, of uh, comedies that don't work. Can you give us some examples? Comedies that don't work? Uh, well, Bananas, Take the Money and Run, What's New Pussycat, What's Up Tiger Lily, are all comedies that I've done uniquely designed to um, to uh, do away with any sense of enjoyment on the part of the audience. Well, if you set out to make a comedy and it doesn't make people laugh, do you feel that you've achieved something? Yes, I think I've... Uh, yeah, no question about it. Well, what oh. have you achieved? My goal. I... Well, congratulations about that. Um, how do you... How much work do you put into a picture? I'll take bananas. Uh, your name appears on the credits several times. Right. And what... Is your function? What do you? How do you look at your function on that particular picture? Uh, I show up on the set every couple of weeks and um, kind of walk around and 
see what's going on and sort of go home. And that's it? That's about it, yeah. Yeah. Uh, what other uh, great comedians, uh, who, who do you admire, of the, of the great film comedians? Um, I'm very impressed with God. Uh, I like his work very much, uh, but nobody else. Is there anyone that, uh, what normal uh, movie guys would consider as a great comedian, is there anyone that you particularly dislike for some reason? Um, particularly dislike? Not really, not really. Uh, what about W.C. Fields or Lauren Hardy? Were they great comedians? W.C. Fields was a great comedian. Oh, Sorry, we got to come. Okay, we're going to keep our fingers crossed. Right. Mark it. Six, take one. Um, yes, Chaplin and uh, W.C. Fields, Lauren and Hardy, were they great comics? Uh, W.C. Fields was a great comedian, and Chaplin was great, but I wasn't that crazy about Laurel and Hardy. Tell me, if um, you're so apathetic about your pictures, why do you um, promote them? Why do I promote them? Because I'm sent here by United Artists to do this, and um, I must. But you do everything you're told? Everything. And why is that? Why, why, why don't you object sometimes, like most uh, movie stars, throw a temperament? Because I want people to like me. Really, what you're doing in your films, you, you want people to like you, but not the actual picture. Right. I like them to like me personally, for what I am. Um, um, what are you? A Jew. And uh, do you find that people don't like you because of that? Uh, no, they don't like me for a lot of other reasons. That's the one thing about me they like. Um, do people come up to you on the streets and uh, say, you're Jewish, great to meet you, and that sort of thing? No, they just come up to me and say, you're Jewish, and leave it at that. Um, in uh, What's New Pussycat, there was a, a very good chase sequence. Now, this idea, was this plagiarized? Yes. And from what? That was stolen from the chase in, um, in uh, a streetcar named Desire. And in uh, Take, the, uh, Take Your Money and Run, um, you were a prisoner. Now, is there anything deeply rooted about uh, you being a prisoner in the picture? Did you write yourself into that part for any special reason? Yes. Can you tell us? Oh, you want to know? I'd like to. Because yeah. <laughs> uh, ever since I was a little boy, I always liked to be tied up by women. But this was a men's prison? Yes, I know. I couldn't, I couldn't do it exactly as I wanted to. But why? Surely that would have offended the public more. Yes, I know, but we couldn't get into the women's prison in the United States because they won't allow men in. So you use an actual prison in that instance? We used, an ac we used actual prisoners, but not an actual prison. What was that, a, a paper mache? Yes, that was a fake prison, but real convicts. Those are actual murderers, uh, which we get from casting. Uh, but the prison itself was a set. Um, <laughs> in What's New Pussycat? Now, this is the first film you appeared in. Yes. Now, you wrote part of the script as well? Yes. Um, do you feel that you're, you're to blame for the uh, success of the picture? No. I had nothing to do with the success of the picture. Well, surely your artistic contribution to that picture must count for something. What? Your artistic contribution to the picture right. must count for something. Must count for something. Uh, no. The picture would have made a lot more money if I hadn't been associated with it. Were you told this afterwards or before you signed the contract? Uh, all during the whole thing. And you ignored it completely? Completely. Yeah. But why is that? Because uh, you usually do as you're told. Yes. Except in certain cases. Uh, like? Like, there are certain times when I don't do as I'm told. Uh, what occasions are those, mostly? That, that's most of the time. Yes. And do you enjoy going around the world promoting your films? Uh, 
Yes, I like to go around the world. Do you prefer working on location or in, in a studio? I like to work uh, on sets. Everything in all my movies uh, have been all filmed on sets. Even Bananas? Yes. Um, that was a, a big studio, was it? The exteriors? The exteriors were all interior. Now, how's that done? We rebuilt Puerto Rico in a studio in New York. Is that, uh, wouldn't that be more expensive than actually going to Puerto Rico? Uh, Puerto Rico, it was not so expensive building Puerto Rico, but constructing the Puerto Ricans was a fortune. Well, how did you go about that? Because I had to move. Uh, how did we go about it? Uh, what do you mean, how did we go well, about I it? Well, I mean, standard way. presumably there are more Puerto Ricans in New York than there are in Puerto Rico. Yes, but you can't use the ones in New York because they're not a member of the union. Now, that's not the actors' union, it's the Puerto Rican union. They're not, they don't have, they're not card-carrying Puerto Ricans. There's a very subtle distinction here. <laughs> are you following this? Yes, I Because it's important. Um, in New York, you can't be a Puerto Rican unless you have to pass a written examination and a physical and an eye test. Uh, and those who pass the eye test are, are allowed to be Puerto Rican. Now, how involved do you get in, in the casting of your pictures? Um, I get very involved in the casting. I'm always there when uh, somebody is in my picture. Um, is the production of a film uh, highly complex? I mean, you've, got to, you've got to get people to a certain place at certain times. Um, otherwise, if, if they don't turn up, it costs a lot of money. How do you find people let you down? Well, uh, what, the big problem is figuring out how to turn the camera on. You know, because everybody shows up, but uh, it took us about four weeks to figure out how to work the camera, and then we were four weeks behind schedule. And do you employ... Uh, professional people to work on the, your pictures? No, but not amateurs either. Who then? You know, different ones. <laughs> different ones what? <laughs> <laughs> different, what do you mean different ones? <laughs> oh, God. Certain types, yeah. you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm trying up. The, where did, for instance, in Take the Money and Run, where did the idea come from, from the soap gun? Now, do you prefer c comedy to drama? No. I prefer um, opera. Um, which is your latest opera? I can't work in opera because I don't have any flair for it. I have to be Italian to do opera. I'm only, th I'm three quarters Italian. My mother was Italian. My father was half Italian. Do you go to the cinema very much yourself? No. Well, in that case, uh, have you a favorite film? Yes, many. Can you give us one of them? Uh, yes, but none that I've seen. Uh, probably my favorite film was um, uh, Her Highness and the Pony, which was a film that's playing uh, in the Broadway area in New York and it doesn't star anybody famous and it's a uh, it's what you would call a love story very explicit it's an eight millimeter as a matter of fact okay. seven take one well whether you like it or not we're going to show some clips from uh, your pictures um, would you would you choose one from what's new pussycat Anyone at all? Uh, the th third one. Can it be more specific or can't you remember? I don't know which the third one was, but I, I would prefer to see that one, I think. Why? Because I think the message of the picture is inherent in the third film clip. And then Casino Royale. Casino Royale, you could do yourself a favor by showing the part that says the end. And uh, take the money and run. Uh, that can only be understood if it's projected upside down. And bananas? Uh, bananas. I would not show bananas if I were you. I don't think England is ready for bananas yet. Why not? Because I think that um, 
they need another 10 or 12 years of um, decay before bananas will be a picture they can fully accept. Well, if we hold this program for 12 years, what sequence would you suggest we show in 12 years' time? Um, in 12 years, I think you could show any portion of the film. But try not to show any of the scenes that I'm in. Why? Why? Because I'm in all the scenes in the picture. And I think it would be more interesting that way. Are you a great man for party, Hollywood parties? Yes. Um, what is it that appeals to you about the Hollywood party scene? Uh, the part where everyone goes home at the end. That's my favorite part, the well, good nights. When you go to a party, do you stay long? Uh, just till the good nights. Yes. But that it could be early hours of the morning. Could be. So do you gauge the time you arrive to coincide with that? I, I generally try and arrive for the hellos and leave at the good nights. Yes. And uh, do you drink very much? Yes. Is like a fish. Is there any reason for that? To forget. What is it that, that you want to forget? <laughs> I can't think of it now. <laughs> uh, so it must be working. A classic line. <laughs> Well, that's, um, that was plagiarised from an early Laurel and Hardy picture, wasn't it? Yes, I like Laurel and Hardy a great deal. Um, did they like you? Yes. I loved him, hated her. Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, what is it between the hellos and good nights at a Hollywood party that uh, appeals to you? The interim. Is there... What, who was the first movie star that you met? Can you remember? Uh, yes, I, I met uh, Trigger, uh, who was Roy Rogers' horse um, at a party. Actually, I picked him up at a party, and um, we had an ongoing relationship for two years after that. Which I'm very proud of. Did you ever meet Roy Rogers at that time? No, I have no interest in meeting Roy Rogers. But um, I loved living with his horse. But what about the smell? Uh, he didn't mind that so much. <laughs> Um, the silent scenes in Bananas, uh, they, were, they were stolen from elsewhere, were they? Yes. From where? The second part of the movie was stolen from the first part of the movie. Um, does it show? Yes, if you sit through it long enough. And this doesn't often happen, I suppose? No, no one's ever sat through the entire film. Well, if they haven't sat through it, how can they admire the, the end sequence? They tell? can't, that's just it. Yeah. Um, would it possibly not be better to show the, the end first? Uh, yes, it would be better to show the end first. I tried to get United Hours to do that, but, uh, but they don't. Do you object to people coming in into a cinema in the middle of a picture? No, I think that that's the right time to come in, is the middle. The picture what? should not be seen from the beginning to the end, because the meaning then becomes obscure. And what is the meaning of, uh, behind this uh, latest picture of yours? The meaning behind it? Yes. The meaning behind it is the same, it's the same theme as all my pictures. Now, have you ever wanted to branch out? I mean, you seem to stick to the same theme every time in, in your pictures. Have you wanted to break away from this and uh, do another type of picture? Uh, yes. I would like to do a drama that fails to move anybody. And what would be the object of that? Because nobody else is doing that kind of thing. Why do you think that is? Uh, I don't think they have the skill. Mm. Well, I can understand the first, but why the sexual activity? Because sexual activity is um, antithetical to what makes a great director. Now, this is strange, because you're about to make a picture about sex. Okay? Yes. Now, what, what's the motivation behind that? Because I want to I deal with some of the most pressing sexual problems in the United States. Who are they? Who are they? <laughs> there, there are certain problems that are reflecting, you know, a uh, uh, vital concern to people in the United States, and I want to attack those problems. Do you find that if you tell a joke in America, people don't laugh in England? Yes. 
that's exactly what happens. When I tell a joke in the United States, people will not laugh in England, and conversely, they will not laugh in the United States. So it's an interesting combination. Now, why do people employ you as a comedian if you don't make them laugh? Uh, because I'm, I create an interval between the two singers. Are you liable to do any more television spectaculars? Uh, no, not likely. I've sworn off television. Why is that? Because it brings me into too many homes. And I have trouble getting out of some of them. Australia, thank you very much. Oh, it was a pleasure. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> that, that'll keep him out of the theatre. No, right. The title of my latest picture? Yes. <laughs> That's a good point. Um, um, it's hard for me to recall the title of the picture. <laughs> just, um, just sitting here like this, because the picture obviously made a tremendous impression on me. Um, my, my last film... <laughs> this is embarrassing. I should know it, because I worked a year on it. And I, I was the one that titled it, but I can't come up with it. But I know you'll like it if you see it. In Bananas, there are some silent sequences, aren't there? Uh, yes, accidentally. Oh, why are they silent? Because we lost... What happened to it? Negligence. Well, where did it go? Left on the subway. Has no one handed it in at the uh, lost property office? No, we've never been able to recover the soundtrack, and so what we do is play music and, and run the sequences silent. Do you like people to laugh at you? No, no, I don't like the sound of laughter. Why is that? Is it something um, uh, psychological about uh, your approach to comedy? Yes, I have a very unusual approach to comedy in the United States, and that is that um, I try and get anyone who sees the film to nap through it. I mean, does it offend you that uh, your film will be shown in theatres and people presumably will pay to go and see it? Uh, nobody has paid to see it yet and it's been running in the United States for six months so I don't think that there's going to be any problem over here. Aren't you scared that um, the uh, cinema managers would want to take the picture off? Yes they do, that's what happens. How do you go about finding your actors and actresses? Uh, generally we, we flush them out of an all-night cafeteria you know, uh, we go by and whoever's there at 2, 3 in the morning sitting over coffee with a brown paper bag, those are the people that we use. Well, to be more specific, in Bananas, how did you cast your co-stars? How did I cast them? Um, well, I cast some of them, you know, just at random and some of them not just at random and some just showed up and wanted to be famous, so we put them in the movie. And, uh, you know, it was just like that. What's the uh, message in uh, Bananas? The message in Bananas is don't see bananas. Uh, what prompts you to put a, over a message like that in a film that people will have paid to go and see? To see? I mean, they get it, they'll pay their money, they go and see it, and then you're telling them well, they shouldn't have seen it. They shouldn't. Right, that's precisely it. I wanted to make a film the message of which was not to see the film that people were seeing when they actually got the message. Uh, don't ask me why, because I'm very sick. Uh, where did the idea come from? That was improvised at the time. Uh, I was there with um, the gun made out of soap, and um, it started to rain, and the soap started to bubble, and we left it in the picture. Do you often do more than one take on a sequence? Yes, yes. I, I shoot over and over and over again. Same thing, over and over and over. Then I don't print any of what I filmed. Why not? Because there's no point to it. Um, that's where the expense mounts up, if you print things. You know, you can shoot as much as you want. I may shoot 
200,000 feet of film for a picture and then not print any of it. And so it keeps my budget down very low. Well, where does the finished product come from, then, if you don't print any? We buy that in Japan. How do you buy it? I mean, is, is it very expensive? It's a lot less expensive than if you had to make your own film. But do you buy it by the foot? Yes. Good comedies are always purchased by the foot, whereas dramas are purchased by the yard. Now how, do you, how do you look at the uh, permissive scene in the cinema? I, I generally sit down and have it run in front of me. And does it bother you? It does bother me, yeah. Very much. How does it bother you? Because I've always felt that sex is dirty. And, uh, and I'm against sexual relations between people. Does that mean men and women? No, just, just people. Casino Royale, uh, now, this is hard to remember because this was years ago, but I, I had the feeling while they were making the picture that uh, it was going to be a fiasco. And it was a fiasco. Certainly. Uh, what part did you play uh, in, in this fiasco? Uh, I was in the film very briefly, uh, and that's all. But I never saw the movie, and um, no one that I know saw the movie. In fact, I don't think anybody saw the movie. They lost many millions of dollars on it. Uh, did that please you? Yes, I was thrilled. <laughs> um, who were your co-stars in that picture? Um, in Casino Royale? Who else was in it? I was about the biggest name in that picture. I was surrounded by a group of non-entities, as I remember. I was not thrilling, and um, I'd say the entire cast, including myself, were about 12 of the most boring people I've ever met. Uh, is there any English actor that uh, you think is, is, uh, stands out from the others? Spike Milligan. Which of his pictures did you like most? Uh, the, the early romances. Who, who are the leading ladies? I can't remember. No, I can't either. No. They were just people off the street, I'm sure. <laughs> In fact, most of them are back on the street now. <laughs> uh, you've written, directed, produced and appeared in your own pictures. Now, what advice would you give to someone, uh, a young television writer, say, um, who wanted to follow your line of approach to the film business? Uh, I would say to eat lightly. Stay with salads, mostly. Fish. And not to smoke. And to refrain from sexual activity.